Well, hello, Cardinals. How you doing? It is that time. Uh, I don't know if this was intended uh, to be a hashtag, uh, but I've saw several um, several videos here lately about um, 10 mass market decks and 10 indie decks, and I didn't know that I had enough of those uh, like that in my collection uh, to do one of those videos any justice and then i saw this top five tarot top five oracle at uh jess reed's cards and i thought this one i can do um so i'm going to uh start off if you've watched um my channel at all then you will know that my number one favorite deck is Isabella Rockman's This Might Hurt. And when I first saw this deck, uh, the name of it uh, and that symbol on the front, uh, the This Might Hurt and that snake chewing his own tail, that kind of put me off a little bit and I never would have anything too much to do with this deck. And then I saw a walkthrough on somebody's... Uh, uh, page one day and I was like oh my goodness I've got to have this deck and um, I went to Isabella's website and ordered directly from her um, and it fast became uh, my number one favorite deck um, this is the one they'll have to pry out of my cold dead hands um, the rest of these are my favorites, but in no particular order. Um, next, I have sitting up here Three Trees Tarot Volume 3 of the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. And this is the pocket size version of that. Um, I didn't uh, get the standard size, but I think this little deck is just the cutest and the sweetest animal deck there is. Uh, this is like the deck that gives me a hug. Um, I absolutely love this animal deck. And uh, Stephanie and Adam are in the process. Uh, they're going to release a Oracle deck called Thistledown uh, next month, I think it is. I think it's going to be sometime in May. It's going to hit the Kickstarter. And they've already begun drawing uh, their next deck. Uh, and it's going to be called, I think, Heartwood. And so I'm looking forward uh, to both of those. Um, they will get my money. Um there's not a doubt in my mind that they will definitely get my money um, for their decks. I absolutely love the work that they put out. So, again, that is Stephanie Burroughs and uh, Adam Ola from Three Trees Tarot. Uh, my next favorite, um, my next top tarot deck is Fifth Spirit by Charlie Claire Burgess. And um, this deck, I bought it because of one particular card. Um, I have these in order, so we won't see it now. Um, but the Knight of Pentacles, it shows an amputee. And I'm an amputee. And the character in the photograph is kind of androgynous. I don't know if they're male or female. I think they're female, but I wouldn't swear to it. And it's really not that important anyway. Um, but that card spoke to me on a personal level, and I bought this deck solely based on that one card. And then after I got it and saw all the inclusiveness of age, race, uh, body size, body image, um, mobility. Uh, th there's another card in here of, a, of an older man in a wheelchair. And um, just the 
inclusiveness in that deck uh, just really won me over. So, Fifth Spirit. Another deck that shows uh, quite a bit uh, and is one of my top decks is Anthony's Modern Love Tarot. And um, this, again, has a, a modern take. Um, it is... Um, this is a, a, a love deck. It, it's drawn and, um, the guidebook is geared towards love readings. Uh, and I absolutely love this deck. Um, Anthony done a fabulous job with this deck and with, the big, thick, chunky guide, but I mean, look at here, look at that guidebook. Have you ever? I mean, yeah. And they tell me that all her guidebooks to all of her decks are like that. Um, but yeah, this I really, really um, like the diversity, the inclusiveness of this deck as well. And it seems like as much as I love Ryder Waite Smith, that um, I am being drawn more and more um, to the um, modernized decks. And in some ways, I guess they could be called clones. Um, but um, I'm loving um, the modern decks. My next favorite deck is uh, The Sawyer's Path uh, by Jamie Sawyer. And this was part of the deluxe edition. It was the uh, pencil drawings that she done in red pencil. And then it was the companion or the mirror of that in color. And so this is a modernized Ryder Waite Smith. So this is a clone in a lot of ways. Um, but she done it in her tattoo style, cl cleaning up the lines, modernizing the images, adding a little more inclusiveness uh, in the deck. Um, and, and so, yes, it is a very beautiful deck. And I knew I had to include at least one rider weight. And I went looking through those to see which one um, was going to go. And it had to be Jamie Sawyer. For the longest time, this was my very favorite deck. And then, uh, this might hurt, knocked it off its pedestal. So, um, yeah. So, those are my top five. Um tarot decks. And so then that brings us to the next part of my top five oracles. And um, I'm going to start with this one. This is Crystal Banners, the Sign of the Times oracle. And I'm starting with this one because this is the oracle that I love to pair with This Might Hurt. Uh, it is images from everyday life, everyday objects that we may see, that, that, that we see every day. And then they have a keyword up underneath. There's a title and a keyword. But uh, it pairs so beautiful for that true, authentic punch Um that that reading would give you. This might hurt combined with this, with the sign of the times. Th that is my favorite pairing of all times so far. Nothing, nothing else comes close. Um, I could use these every single day and not touch anything else. Uh, but I try to give myself a little diversity and a little variety. Um, and so, but 
this is my favorite setup, my favorite pairing. Um, and so the rest of these are in no particular order. Um, next would be, uh, the next one I have sitting here is Seasons of the Witch, Beltane, uh, Oracle. Now I have the Yule, the Samhain, the Beltane. Uh, I have those three already. And I have on pre-order the Embolk and the Mobbin. Um, I will be getting the entire collection. Uh, all eight Sabbaths. But this is um, the Beltane. And as you know, Beltane is May 1st. So that's coming up here pretty soon. So, But I'm going to use this deck. Uh, also, if, if you saw another video, this I, I'll be using this deck uh, for the month of May uh, with my oracles. But I love um, the illustrations in this deck. I love the keywords. I love the messages. Um, I would say of the three seasons of The Witch that I currently own, this is my favorite of those. Um, so, yeah, that's another one of my top oracles. Another one of my top oracles is by Sandra Ann Taylor, and it is the Energy and Spirit Oracle. And I guess this one is a little what some people call woo-woo. Um... But sometimes I like a woo-woo deck. Uh, it has a title and then like keywords down here at the bottom. And, um, and I love this deck. There are also, I think, angels in here. Uh, Things that relate to spirit in here. Um, it's just a beautiful deck. And to me, uh, you can use this oracle with just about any tarot you have. I think this is a... Um, it pairs well um, with other decks. So that is the Energy and Spirit Oracle by Sandra Ann Taylor. The next one is Chris Sands Sacred Creators. And um this deck is real simple. It's just a color background with a phrase on it. Um, Thought-provoking, um, limitations inspire innovations. Stop, drop, and ground. Collaboration of souls. Changes. Accept and receive. Follow through. And so you can just work off of the messages on the cards and run intuitively if you want to. Or there's a nice little guidebook to go with it that you can also consult if you want to use it that way. Now, every one of these decks that I've chosen um, have a guidebook. And, of course, all of them could be used intuitively. Um, but, um, a as well as the tarot decks, everything can be used intuitively, but all, everything has beautiful guidebooks. The last one in the bunch is my Cottage Witch Oracle I bought from Krista. And of course I had to have it in her beautiful bag. Um, that's the way she chooses to 
well, one of the ways she chooses to do her decks. And um, again, this deck, you have a title and a keyword to go with the image. And you could run completely intuitive with that if you so chose. But there's also a guidebook uh, to this oracle as well. And the color aesthetic of this, the parchment background, I think, makes it complementary to a lot of tarot decks um, and makes it work well. So, yeah, this is the Cottage Witch Oracle. Now, Krista done the original Cottage Witch and then she done an expansion pack and when... I hadn't bought the original yet. It was one of those things I kept looking at and kept putting off. But when she done the expansion pack, I'm like, oh, I got to do this. So this, I have both of those in here. So those are my top five tarot and my top five oracle. And it seems like I just blasted right through those. Okay. Um, let me know what you think of my choices that I picked. And let me know if you're going to do a VR uh, or your own version of Top 5 Tarot, Top 5 Oracle. Uh, I treated it as a hashtag and a VR that I'm going to give to at Jess Reads. And again, uh, I will have a link uh, to um, to her video down below. Do go give her some support. Um, if you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you. I appreciate your support and your encouragement. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, it will help my small channel to grow. And I want to, I want to grow. Uh, if you, please comment down below. Let me know what you like, what you don't, uh, what resonates. Make suggestions for other content you'd like to see me to create. Give me feedback on this or other videos. Uh, share my videos with your friends. All of these things will raise me in the algorithm and help me to grow. And I'm truly grateful for that. Um, so, uh, you will see me again here soon in another hashtag VR or an unboxing and review or first impressions. Um, I've got a, uh, monthly deck picks, um, video coming out this week uh, uh, for the decks that I'm going to use in the month of May. And um, I do daily collectives in between all of that. So um, thank you for, for watching and see you again soon. Bye.